out again. It's a red stick. Hey guys, welcome back to Bait and Tackle. Today we're gonna do an episode on a technique called dusting. And what we're gonna end up doing is some bigger baits that are bigger than this. This is just a jerk bait that I've got from AI Molds. But see the, the lines and the, the fins and everything, how they're colored like that? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something similar to that. Probably the same color scheme and everything. See if I can zoom into this so you guys can get a better. Probably gonna do that same thing, but we're gonna do it on a bigger scale. So, what we're gonna end up doing is some epic bait molds, epic puds, so 3.5 inches. We're gonna do those, and we're also going to do some AI four-inch swim baits. So we're gonna do two different types. Um, and the first part of the process is we need to do some skin pours. So I need to heat up some clear plastic. We need to pour these molds first, and then we'll come back and do the dusting portion. And then after we get done dusting, then we'll go ahead and do our, um, our actual open pour colors. So it's gonna be a little bit of a process, but Hang tight. I'm gonna to try to skip through some of the stuff that we normally do, like, you know, vacuuming out the plastic. And I already have the plastic made for the three colors that we're gonna use, same colors as that bait right there we just saw. And the one thing that we're gonna to do today that's a little bit different that I haven't seen in any other videos yet is we're gonna dust, but we're also gonna use um, some stencils. And I got these stencils to do crankbaits with, with airbrushing. But what I did was I just cut them up into smaller pieces. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these stencils on the bait skin pours and we're gonna dust them. We're gonna dust the pattern onto them. That's what I did with those other baits. So it should be something pretty, pretty interesting today. Something different I haven't seen yet. So let's get it started. So the first thing we're gonna do guys is we're going to get our molds all open and we're gonna get all of the hook slots taken out. Lay them out. And we're actually going to pour onto this cookie sheet, and that way the hot plastic has somewhere to collect. And I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit closer when we start doing some of this process so you guys can see more of the details better. But for right now, all I'm doing, and I'm just going to make a couple piles of these just so that they're out of the way. So we're going to do our pouring. Our parts are where they need to be. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this real quick. And that one's actually missing a hook slot. I'm also taking those out. So I'm gonna go find those hook slots and put them back over here. And I'm heating up the clear plastic right now so that we can do our skin pouring. So let me finish doing these. And we're gonna have a nice little tray to dust. So we're gonna do six baits total and uh, we're going to use this stencil and we're going to use these are the brushes I like to use and the dusting powder that I bought it's just mica powder and the brand is uh, Tekka something I can't remember what it's called Tekka Ruse um, I got it off of Amazon fairly cheap it came in this entire box so you get this entire box and it was like 25 colors or something like that. I mean, it was a, it was a pretty pretty good deal. So it's, it's a whole box full of, um, it's a whole box full of colors. So you get all these colors in there. And it came with a couple like different kits too. So you've you got everything, black and silver. Today we're going to be using, um, we're going to be using black on the fins and black on the, on the, um, 
stencil. And then what I'd like to use for the top, for the front part of the fish is I think I'm going to use a copper color, unlike the um, color that I used on the last one. I used like a dark gray. So I'm just going to use black and copper for these, these ones that we're going to do today. Okay guys, I've got my plastic heated up. It's a little bit, it's not as clear as I'd like it to be, but when I, I know when I pour it out it's going to be clear. It's going to be really clear. So I'm going to show you how this comes out too. So we're going to just put all of our molds off to the side here so we can pour over top of this. What I'm going to do is, I don't like to do the, the paddle tail, but when we do the actual pour, the actual pour, what I do like to do is start right before the paddle tail, and then just go ahead and keep pouring right down around to the head. Make sure you get everything good, okay, and that's your pour. So after we get done doing this on all these molds, what we're going to do is cut off the edge of that and just use your finger on the edge of the mold because it's nice and sharp. We're just going to take off all that, but again, I don't want the tail. I'm going to pour that, so it's going to be separated. So let's just go ahead and do these. Now, with these molds, the uh, Epic Bay molds. I like to start right there behind that last fin, same kind of the same spot, right before your paddle tail. But I like to get that fin in there too, and that way we can color the fin. It's always fun to do is color that fin and make it a different color. But same idea, just start right behind that back fin. Make sure you get a nice, even coat of plastic over everything. Sometimes you might get these little bubbles and stuff, and you could either you could either pull the bubble out or pour over to it and try to heat it up and smooth it out, or or just pull the whole skin out once it's cooled down and just do it again. Sometimes it takes a few it takes a few tries. I've, been, I've done this a few times now that it really doesn't really doesn't bother me now. And even without gloves, like you should, you I should, you know, tell everybody, caution everybody to go ahead and use gloves when you can. Now see, like this one, I just left a big air gap in there, and I don't like that, so I'm going to pull this off. And I'm going to go ahead and re, re pour it again, and I'm going to get this end the plastic off this thing too. It's not helping. So now we're going to go ahead and fresh pour again. The plastic's probably getting a little cold too now. That's quite a few molds doing this. Okay guys, so so far so good. What we're going to do here now is we're going to take the mold To take the mold and this this has got a real nice sharp edge right here all we're going to do is we're going to push your thumb down on that edge and what that'll do what that'll do is make a nice a nice cutting edge so that you can pull the skin the extra skin off okay so now so now we got to go through and take skin off, the extra outside excess skin off of the mold. And then I may even trim up a little bit where some of that plastic got in the tail a little bit. So I'm going to cut that out of there too. So I'm going to make it nice and flush and then we can color whatever we want to color in the mold. And again, all we're going to do on these is we're going to color the fin, I'm going to color the head, probably put black behind the eye sockets, and then uh, the stripes this way. So we're going to do a perch pan. Should, should look pretty sweet, but let me get go through this and try to get the excess off of all these molds. It's going to take a little bit to do that, so it's probably one of the one of the longest parts. Okay, so I wanted to real quick just kind of give you guys a little a uh, little bit more information about these. 
Uh, these are the the AI four inch open pore swim baits, and they're a little bit tougher to cut to push down the plastic and try to cut along this edge, especially where the hook slot goes. So I find it easier to take a small exacto knife and cut right along the edge of that. Then you can pull that out of there. But these edges, these solid edges around outside the, the hook slots, they're fine. You can push your thumbs on them real good and they'll come right off. And uh, the one thing I'll actually show you guys on the Epic Bait molds, they, these, these seem to be a lot better when it comes to having that finer cut edge for doing this skin pouring. And I'll, I'll just give you kind of an example here. If I just push my thumb along that sharp edge, just pushing my thumbs along that sharp edge, and it usually just comes right off. Now, the Epic Bait molds, they have a real sharp edge on them, except, and I, I think it, it just depends on the mold, but even this one has a tough time where that fin is. So where that fin is, I'm still going to take a razor blade, an exacto knife, and I'm going to just go ahead and trim out that part right there because it's just there's not enough edge there to get a good cut on it. So I just have to very delicately try to not push up the plastic either. Really, all you gotta do is score it because it'll it'll pull apart once it has that little break in it. But that's it. And I'm just gonna leave it right there. I'm not gonna cut any more of that tail off because that'll just hold right in real well. So that wasn't too bad at all. These ones take a little bit longer because so you gotta cut those. You really do have to cut those uh, uh, hook slots out. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of black powder mica powder. Now the idea here is don't get too crazy. We don't need a ton because if you get more on there it's going to make more of a mess. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to do the eye socket and I'm just going to dab it a few times to darken the eye socket with black. Okay. And then you can you can blow off some of that excess, but it, remember some of that is it's it's dust, so it will just carry across the plastic and it'll stick to it. So we did the eye there, okay. The next thing we're going to do in black is we're going to do the fin. Now what I like to do is start solid out at the tip of the fin. And I need some more dust here. I need some more powder. Let me get some of that powder. And I like to do is start heavy out where you got a hard edge and then come back and kind of kind of let that you know lift up on that brush a little bit to let it kind of fade. Then that way now, and I'm just going to touch this up just a little bit. Okay, so now the fin is black and the eye socket's black. Okay, now the next part that we're going to do, and this is where I haven't really thought about this yet too much yet, um, is which one, which, which set of stripes we're going to use. And I think we're going to use... I don't want to go too crazy. Probably these three here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure to that one. It's going to be this one, this one, this one. That way we got a little bit of a space in around the body. So I'm going to just going to try to push it in there. Get some black powder. And I don't know how these ones are going to come out. This is the first time I've done this on this mold.
This might be a little bit more difficult on these molds because they're a little bit spaced apart. Yeah. So the black bled through too much on that. You see it? See how it's too much there, too much there, too much there? So these are going to be a little bit more difficult to do on this rounded bait. So what I may end up doing, and unfortunately, like I said earlier, there's no way to really get that off of there. It's, 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 it is what it is at this point. So we kind of screwed that one up. And I think what the problem was is this, this uh, just isn't getting the, the bend that it needs. And I think what we're going to do, we're going to do to fix that is I use these smaller ones on another mold. I'm just going to go ahead and cut those off. this mold to make it lay flatter we're just going to go ahead and cut that down to size so that we can fit it in here fit in there better for the next round okay so we modified that a little bit made, made them a little bit made this little stencil a little bit smaller so we can get it in there so hopefully the next one will, will be better but what I'm going to go ahead and do in the meantime is I'm going to cut this other one down because there are two sides and we're going to use this side one, two, three, four, five. And I cut into six. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and modify because this is going to go the other way. So we're going to go ahead and modify this just from around the corners a little bit so it goes on the body easier for the next side. Okay, but so continuing on, we're going to set that off to the side for a second. I'm going to go ahead and do the flip side. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing. And again, practice makes perfect. I'm not perfect at this yet either. So I'm going to go ahead and color the eye. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the fin. switch up brushes here. I've got one that's a little bit stiffer, a little bit smaller. Works pretty well. There we go. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and try to do the stripes. So we're going to do three stripes. I want that one to be visible. I'll try to line it up with the top here. And one thing we can do is try to round. I think this is like a lightweight plastic. Let's see if we can round it up a little bit too. Make it so it'll conform to the plastic a little bit better. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and use this other brush and let's see if this makes a difference. Feel better about this one already. Yep, there we go. So, using the stencil, I've got my three stripes, I've got my fin, and my eye done. So, this one's going to look a little bit messed up because it's got that other side, but that's okay. Sometimes having something that's messed up is a good thing. A little bit, a little bit different, something for it to see, a little difference, right? So, now that we got those colored black, 
I am going to get a paper towel and get off this black. Shop towel works good. And I'm just going to get rid of the excess color on the cloth here. Then I'm going to go ahead and open up copper. And I'm just going to go ahead and do copper. All over the entire head of the of the fish. Now I just dropped some on there. And luckily, I dropped it on the bad side. But all I'm doing is taking that copper and just fanning it out. And I want it to be right along the edge of this gill plate here. Okay, so I'm going to continue doing the gold here. And and go easy on the powder, guys, because too much powder makes an awful mess. Again, I'm coloring the whole head from the gill plate forward. Like that, see it? Then I'm going to go ahead and do this a bunch more times. So, again, just painting the head with copper and the gill plate forward. And the brushes make a big difference. Um, I'm starting to see that too with this brush right here, is far superior to the other brush that I've been using. I think this brush definitely takes the cake and I may have to go get some more. There you go. So, there's our stripes from our stencil. There's our little um, our gill, or our uh, fin, that came out pretty decent. And actually what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to touch that up just a hair. Okay, so that was our fin, black, our eye socket black, and the head is copper. So when we do our layers, it's going to be orange on the bottom, the gold, yellowish in the, in the center, and green for the top and the tail. So we'll see how that comes out. <clears throat> so, other side I didn't do too, too hot on. Um, I may wipe that off and try it again, I don't know. But it seems to be that that, that black is just kind of set into that uh, plastic pretty well. So I don't want to redo the entire thing again. So I think we're good there. And once you're done with doing something like this, take your, take your plate and you put it back together. Screw it together with the little screws that came with it, unless you're using a clamp. And then do your three la layers of pouring. And we're going to come back and do that. Um, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down, and I am going to continue doing the rest of them. I've got three more of those to do, and I've got two of the Epic Bait molds. And I think I'm going to do one of the Epic Bait molds now so you guys can see how that one comes out. <laughs>
guys. I had to adjust the camera so you guys can see this a little bit, but I got my orange ready to go. Um, got it to about eh, probably 320 right now. Um, got all the moisture and air bubbles out. And you don't want to pour this too hot because it'll mess up the skins. So I'm going to go nice and steady. I'm going to pour just some in the bellies of each one of these. You'll be able to see these bigger ones, hopefully, but you won't be able to see those smaller ones. So yeah, it's, you want to try not to hit the sides. I'm just going to do that much. Just enough to fill in the bottom. And I'm sorry if you can't hear me that well. I've got the fan on, the vent fan. So I can breathe and I'm not breathing all this plastic. Do the same thing for all these too. Just a little bit. In the bellies. Try not to hit the sides. These ones are going to be a little bit tougher. I just kind of messed that up. Right there. I'm just going to try to. I can here. Two more. And we're going to go back over top of this after this sets up. That's why I like to run at 250 because then I can. Um, kind of keep the temperature controlled to a cooler level, and that way these will, these plastic layers will set up real good. Wait a minute, that one up right there. Kind of throws it on the side. But you don't want to do this too hot, because if you do it too hot, again, it, it will mess up your skin pores. You don't, really don't want to mess up your skin pores. I think that's pretty good. It's, it's settling out now. I know I hit the sides a little bit on one of them, but I think it'll be okay because it's behind the gold. And I think I did it on one of these two, but it seems to be okay. Yeah, it's going to be okay. I think I did it up near the head portion, which is good. So keep that in mind that if you dust the heads a certain color, and it's a solid color, it will um, kind of hide if you pour plastic over it. It's going to be behind that color anyway, so it's not a big deal. So we got the belly color poured. We're gonna wait, let that set up. Um, it'll harden, and then what I'll do is, and I'll just, as a test, I'll just pick up the mold a little bit and see if it moves. If the plastic doesn't move, then we're good to go to the next level. But I'm going to go ahead and start heating up the next color, which is like a, a yellowish gold. And I have some, um, I have some of this, this uh, KP pigments, carbon gold in there and I'll tell you what man that's some pretty nice stuff right there it, it just gives it that perfect yellow gold I think I added a little bit of yellow color to it um, some of that dead-on plastics uh, sunshine yellow so it'll it'll stand out real nice giving it a nice a real nice lateral line so let's let these set up I'm gonna get this other color ready to go and pour that one. okay guys I think we're ready for the last or the uh, second layer here the middle layer the lateral line and I've got this gold all melted up real good got the air out of it I think we should be good the moisture out and again we're just going to do a small we're just going to do a lateral line and I know that orange is set up probably just going to take it right to the top of the uh, right to the top of the uh, hooks line I just took a glove and just tilted these to see if uh, the bottom color is set up and did. Way down in a little bit. 
to exactly where I want them to go to. Okay, so now we got the bottom layer orange, we got the lateral line is a goldish yellow, and then we're going to do the top as a green, and the green has some um, some hyper shift pigment in it. I think it's just like a green to yellow shift, and then I've got I put in some extra glitter just because I wanted there to be a little bit more. I put in some before, but it really wasn't that much. So I'm going to go ahead and eat that color up next. And make sure that these ones are ready to roll this, let this layer set up a little bit, and then we'll uh, pour the last layer, and we should be good. One thing I want to tell you guys that I just experienced when I was doing the mica powder process. Um, I had one of the bottoms of the bags kind of had a little bit of a rip in it, so some of the mica powder was spilled out. And it gets onto this silicone sheet that I have here on the outside that I've got my uh, countertop protected by. Let me see if I can zoom out a little bit so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So I have this silicone here, just a little silicone pad, and then their countertop. And I got some on both, and I can't really get it off of water. It's kind of like makeup. So what I ended up doing was I got some uh, some like antibacterial disinfectant wipes, with some cheap ones, and that seemed to take it off without question. It came right off. Um, I'm not sure so sure about clothes. <laughs> I did get some on my sweatshirt, and I've got it in the laundry now. So I'll let you know if that ends up being okay. But it should come. It should wash right out. I would imagine. I mean, makeup's pretty. It'll stick, but it's not too bad. So I just wanted to give you guys that heads up when you're working with this powder doing dusting that it can stain and it can get onto things and, and it appears to not come off but there are some stuff that you can do to get it off. guys well it's been the whole process been cooled down a little bit and all I'm gonna do right now is and they shrunk up just a little bit um, they shrunk down in the mold a little bit that's okay I'm not, I'm not really too upset about that but like I said this the sharp edge on the top is perfect for just being able to just pull that edge right off of there and you can just continue doing it around the whole mold so just take off that outside edge but let's get one of these we'll get one of these undone and then uh, okay got the top all sorted out let's see what we got here Well, there you go, fellas. That came out pretty darn good. I don't say so myself. I like that copper head. Gives it a real nice... Uh, let's see if I can get this out of here without ripping it. There we go. So, a little bit of flashing there. No big deal. But there you go. What do you think of that? The copper showed up real good. The black behind the eye socket came out good. The fins came out good. And that little design came out pretty darn good. Some of them are a little thick just because I got a little bit of extra dust in there. But I'd say those are a pretty sweet looking swim bait right there. Nice little perch color kind of. So I'm going to go ahead and undo the rest of these. Actually, let's go ahead and do this one real quick. Then that way we can check out one of the Epic Bait molds too. These are some of my favorite molds. This is the 3.5 inch Epic Pud. So that's the other one. Looks great. 
colors stayed separated real good. It didn't mix together. The other one did. Must have just been too hot on that outside edge. But came out great, guys. Nice little perch. That black fin really def defined real nice. That came out great. I'm super, super happy with that. Well, about the last thing left to do here is put some eyeballs on. And I'm going to use some of these eyeballs I got off of Amazon. And I always use the Loctite Super Glue. Probably the best you could use. I just put one little dot of the glue. And position the eyeball where I want it. And there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and do up the rest of these, put the rest of the eyeballs on, and then we'll uh, wrap it up. Here you have it guys, I mean, um, using the stencil to, um, using the stencil to dust these patterns, I mean, it works pretty well. And then, you know, the dusting technique itself with that copper finished head and, and the black uh, fins and stuff, I mean, it just, it really makes a difference. But that's a pretty good looking swim bait. So that's going to do it for today's episode, guys. I hope you have really enjoyed that. Dusting with using stencils to create a nice looking swim bait. I plan on doing some different ones in the future. I'm already thinking about doing some scale pattern. Talk to some of my buddies and uh, just trying to find the, the right stencils to do scale pattern on the side. Came out really good, I'm really impressed. I really do enjoy skin pouring and doing the dusting itself. It makes a really nice swim bait. It's very time consuming, but well worth the process. And I can only make a few of these at a time anyway. I'm gonna plan on getting some more molds anyway. So I could do at least probably like six, maybe six to 10 at a time. I don't know, it just depends on what I feel, what I'm feeling. But I will upgrade to a bigger griddle at some point and I'll be able to hopefully expand my working area. So thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We're getting really close to 500 subscribers. I hope we can do that by the end of the year. I've got some more videos coming to you. I'm gonna to try to do a couple more bait making videos, but I've got some fishing videos from the summer as well. So I'll probably sneak those in there, probably do like every other kind of thing. But thank you guys so much for your support. Thanks for watching and remember, Keep on baiting.